and we're back with some more crap. I have had the case on for a little bit, and I wanted to go over uh, two things that I've been working on. So as you saw in my previous video, uh, my best friend passed away, and he left me a bunch of stuff. Um, and, you know, I've just been going, taking care of that, helping his brother clean out his house, and things like that. Uh, it's been a lot of work, so here in the new year, I wanted to do a video on a uh, one of the 3000s drives. This is the Chinon FB357A. So there's one thing that is very common between your FB354 880K Amiga drive and the FB357A. They're identical drives, except for one thing. On the 357A here, you will see near the eject button, right, there's a little uh, switch. It's called HD. Uh, over here you have your write protect and disk insert. It's a little double pin. They depress down when the disk is inserted. If the write protect is, is on, it will not allow this to depress. Therefore, that's write protect. And if it doesn't detect this to being depressed, there's a no disk insertion. And that way you'll get your tick and your, whoops, on this side, there is a single depression pole. What is that for? Well, when you have a 880K disc, this side does not have a hole. A high density disc does. And if you unripe protect it, you'd have a hole on the left and a hole on the right. If the Amiga detects that that switch is in the upward position, meaning something, there is a disc insertion, Right protect or non right protect is engaged or disengaged on the Amiga. Uh, this side will detect that there is no uh, depression on the HD pin. That will allow the drive to slow itself to 150 RPM and enable 1.76 megabyte floppies. Now, when I stated that the Chinon FB354 uh, is the same. It is identical circuit board. I took them apart. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it does have the HD circuitry. There's nothing different on here. Capacitor-wise, layout-wise, I compared them both. There's a revision difference between the pin versus this ribbon cable on one. Uh, the layouts are a little different, but the circuits are the same. Mainly on this board. This photo cell here, there's a magnet. Now, I've seen a bazillion posts before I even made this video about... How do you slow a drive down? How do you make it do this, put a magnet on it? No, 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 because that'll just double your signal and screw you up even more. It's controlled in the circuitry via this switch. Uh, I put some continuity across it. it. Basically, it can be a two pin or a three pin, depending on your model. When the disc is inserted, it just tells it to uh, slow down. So what I did was I took apart one of the other PC drives, that Alps drive, well I had two of them, the one that the circuit board was broke on and all I wanted it for was these things. These are its own disk insertion and then write protect. Uh, so when it went in it would detect this is a disk insertion and this one was write protect or non write protect. I don't care about that. I want these switches. Why? Because, okay so I removed, I had to remove the GVP card to get the screw out. Um, this is a 354 FB354 Chinon, and of course my GoTech and my Bergs. So what I'm talking about is this. Do you see the HD? It even says HD on it right there. The normal, the normal switching is here. And if we look, okay, so if we look in the case itself, here's our two prongs for write protect and disc insert. And there's the hole for the switch. See it? To go through. My idea... I'm going to test it. I don't care if I sacrifice the drives. I take one of these switches off because I looked online. You can't find double pole depression switches. Um, I am going to solder one in here and just see if it freaking works. So let's show you what the actual drive does. This is a blank Amiga kit label uh, 880K BASF double sided double density. This is a verbatim 1.44 PC HD disc. With my GVP card out, I'm down to a measly 128 megs of RAM. So first, I'm gonna hold this sideways as I insert it and watch the rotation speed. 
So there you go. It's empty on the screen. It's uh, it's right here. It's empty. Disregard the DF1 you saw I unplugged the cable. So just so you can see the screen, I should put this on the capture card. I know. I apologize. Ouch! I do have some other video I might clip to. So if I run uh, the format in Sys system, you will see that DF0 here is 1.760K. And you can use it. I think there's some crap even on here. The problem is... Oh, I... <laughs> Yeah, really loaded it up there. I'll put Emma Speed Test on there. Oops. Damn it, it's right protected. Let me unright protect it. So I have 1.7 megs free, 18.5 in use. I'll copy Hippo Player. And it, it when it's in use, it uh writes at a slow speed too. This head just turns very slow. The whole time it's being used. That does stop. Now, like using a PC drive. You're hit or miss whether you're going to have, uh, as long as you have two f actual floppy disk chin-ons, 354, 357, two 357s, which I've only seen one of, and that's my 3000, um, or a hodgepodge of a GoTech and a floppy drive. For some reason, the high density gives me issues if I have a GoTech connected to it. I have to have the GoTech and DF1. It's something about the signal for motor swap. If you know how Amiga floppy drives work, when one motor call is made to spin the motor, uh, it doesn't on the other one. If you have a GoTech, it just passes that signal. So that's why sometimes when you're using a GoTech as a DF1 style device, or even DFO, you might see your DF1 light light up. And the motor might even spin while you're using your GoTech. It's happened to me before. Um, for some reason, it doesn't do it after one of the new firmware flashes. Maybe they updated it. I don't know. But we're going to continue just loading this up with stuff. Copy an Amiga Explorer. I have noticed one thing. While it is totally kick-ass to have a 1.76 megabyte floppy, 99.999% of everything Amiga is done on 880Ks. Why? Because they didn't come out until the four, three, 3 and 4,000 series. So I can load this up. I've already used uh, not much. Let's actually copy something to it and see if it can handle a larger file. So we'll let this finish copying. It is not as fast, believe it or not. You get added storage. The 880Ks are faster because it's spinning at 300 RPM versus 150. So I'm going to close this and then we're going to go just run uh, directory opus. Directory opus 4, the good one. We go to the SD card and we're going to go to music. We'll go to mods. I know I can fit some mods. So here's one so while we're copying I'm gonna go ahead and also open the drive so we can watch the size go down now I don't know if this is dynamic while it's copying but I know this is and it still runs at that slow speed I don't know if you can hear this thing chunking along. It reminds me of the Amiga 1010 drive, the Big Hoss external. Looks like you chopped half of a 1000 off. I love that drive, by the way. So we're at 1.4 megs free. We're still larger than a PC floppy drive, and we have, you know, 300K used. Now look at the speed. It is not fast by any means but you do get the space and before you flamers jump on me for this has been tried 10 years ago you know what thanks thank you for your comments there are new users to the Amiga community at all times I know a lot of you new users are not using actual hardware you're using WinUAE or FSUAE which is totally fine um, welcome to the community I hope you enjoy it but for the people who are actually on real hardware, you can look up or get into flame wars all you want about what's been done or what hasn't been done. I don't see your butt doing anything. So anyway, I'm going to try this. I'll do my research on the circuit board. If there's any documentation available, it's hard to find stuff that hasn't been flamed over on Amiga World or, or Amiga.org or what the hell ever. All right, so we still got a meg left. Let's... uh. 
You can even do check fit. Yes, will fit. Copy. Still copying. 821K free. We're at 937.5 in use. Still chunking along. Like I said, not fast at all. This is the 3000's DFO drive. When I first started looking into this project, I got a lot of flack saying it would not run on any uh, pre-3000 Amiga. And that's not true because when the 3000 came out, it has a revision 1.4 1.2 or 1.4 ROM that was a super kickstart you would load you would create a super kickstart disk that would then copy the kickstart file to the hard drive and reload it and you'd have a re-kick like a, a, a map ROM to, to boot and after the 3000 was introduced it had uh, okay so I used 1.7 megs of space okay let me say cancel and abort skip Okay, so we use 1.7 megs. I have 52 kilobytes available. You can see right here, I have a lot of things. So let me close this for a second. And let's actually go Red Amiga 2, Red Amiga Plus. So if you do Red Amiga M for update, we should be able to see all the files on here. I have 52 kilobytes free. I could even squish probably something more on there. But check it out. That's, that's really neat. And if I wanted to run something from it, like exchange the commodity there it is there's nothing running on this this is just like my junk drive junk hard drive to play with things um, without all the overhead RTG of coffin coffin is a wonderful uh, variant but this is 3141 on a 3.1 uh, ROM so the vampire in here only has a 3.1 ROM you can uh, flash it to 314, but there are times when I actually boot off of disks and it's asking for the, the workbench library and you have to put in your modules disk and it's just a pain in the ass. So I'm just leaving it at 31 on the ROM. There's nothing different. You load all your stuff on software side. That way you still have your libraries on the ROM chip that are needed for most of our boots. Unless you're running software pre-2019, uh, which we're not that's what's going to happen so loading programs not substantially longer they work fine here's Amiga Explorer blah 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 let me cancel Amiga Explorer once again you know I have the cover off I still have not finished the Ethernet adapter you can see it's just still where we left it off I did 3D print the bracket my New Year's resolution is to hopefully clean this desk up a little bit before I trash it again. And if you have a 357, when you put a disc in, especially an HD disc, and it works, that's wonderful. But since this has not been used in like so long on high density, I had to clean that switch. So here's a perfect example. When I put that 880K disc in here, look at the size on format. It knows it's an 880K. So let's flip it. And there's the 1.7, 97% uh, used. Kind of neat. So stay tuned for my modifications of a 354 uh, drive into a 357. If it can be done, I don't know. We'll see. I'm still going to put that on there and give it a shot. I've looked on YouTube. There's like one video for a 357. And the guy doesn't really cover it at all he just kind of sticks a disc in and i don't even think it's a high density disc or maybe he's cleaning the contact i don't know so i wanted to do this quick video on amiga high density discs and what the differences are and how they work with an amiga anything greater than a 2.04 rom which is most machines you can do a 357 a and have high density or low density it's it's up to you so that's it for now thank you for watching and i hope you learned something